Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Cloud Deep Dive. Before we start today's topic, I would like to thank all of you for your support and subscribing to my channel. If you haven't, please go ahead and subscribe and hit on the bell icon to get the latest updates from the channel. So without wasting any time, let's start with today's topic. In today's video, we will discuss what is AWS Private Link, VPC Endpoints, why these are required, how it works and I'll show it in a demo and most importantly we will talk about how you can save money and secure your environment using these endpoints. Okay so let's take an example why we need the VPC endpoint. So first we'll talk about the problem why what was the problem we were having prior to uh, invention of this VPC endpoints and why they need need this. Uh, so suppose you have your EC2 instance running in your VPC and uh, these instances need to talk to uh, any of the AWS service. It can be SQS or Lambda, S3, DynamoDB, SNS, any of this. Even though these services are part of your AWS cloud, they are lying in your uh, AWS network, even though they're kind of, they are not part of your private cloud, they're part of the AWS public cloud but they are within AWS cloud only, AWS network only. But to access it, your instance has to send its request to these and it will go to the public cloud. There was no way to connect privately to these services. So every request will go to uh, public cloud and then from there it will be routed to these services and the data will be sent back to your instances. So what's the issue with that? First, if you, you need to expose your VPC to the internet gateway to connect to the internet. And uh, suppose you don't want your subnet to be connect to the internet or exposed to the internet because you might have a private subnet. To, um, to overcome that, you might use the NAT gateway. And if you use the NAT gateway, then you are incurring more charges to all this because NAT gateway costs you money uh, and any data you're processing through the NAT gateway is again charged or you might have VPN connection, you're connecting through your on-prem or by our using token. So those are the ways you, you were connecting to these services. And the another issue was like one, I'll discuss about the pricing if you're going through the NAT gateway. Another is the bandwidth constraint that whenever you are using the public internet, obviously there will be bandwidth constraint. Uh, another issue is like, uh, your data is exposed to the internet now, even though you are using HTTPS, but still, there is a chances of breaking the security or vulnerability on that. Uh, so there are so many problems with that, that your data or your connections are going through the public internet to access a service which resides within the AWS only. So why don't we have a service which or any feature or any uh, way to connect this privately that I don't need to go to the internet to connect a service which is exist within my AWS cloud. So for that, what AWS has done that they introduced a private link or you can say that uh, a connection you can make by using the endpoints where they will provide you endpoint in your VPC and that endpoint will make a connection with these AWS services and that connection will use Amazon network. Your query or your data will never ever leave AWS cloud network. It will always be within AWS cloud. So your data is more secure compared to you are sending the traffic to the uh, internet and using the public internet to access these services. That's kind of your, your whole connection is more secure and there's no bandwidth constraint as well because whole connection is using or uh, it's using the Amazon network. So there won't be any bandwidth constraint on that. In addition to that, you don't need any internet gateway or NAT gateway or VPN connection or direct connect, you don't need all those things. So you are saving money as well. So suppose you are using NAT gateway uh, that cost money, right? But when you use endpoints, uh, they also cost money, but if you compare the cost and I can show you in the calculator by calculating the cost for uh, one month of data that if you process it through NAT gateway versus endpoint, it will cost you, it will charge you less. And even for the gateway endpoints, which is one type of endpoint, there's no charge of using those endpoints as well. So you can clearly see that uh, by using the endpoints, you will save money, you can secure your data, you will get more reliability because it's using Amazon network. 
Uh, next, let's talk about what are the different kinds of endpoints. So there are three types of endpoints. One is gateway endpoint. Second is gateway load balancer endpoints. And third is interface endpoints, which are also known as private link. Gateway load balancer endpoints, we already discussed in one of my previous video, and I can provide you the link of that in the description below, and you will see on the right hand side on the corner right on the screen. Uh, in today's video, we'll talk about gateway endpoint, and in my next video, I'll talk about interface endpoint. So please subscribe to my channel as well so that you get notification, press on the bell icon as well so that you get notification whenever I upload a video on the interface endpoint as well. So what is a gateway endpoint? What it does that, uh, suppose, uh, first thing, gateway endpoint only provides services for EC, uh, S3 and DynamoDB. So suppose you want your EC2 instance to connect to these services, you can use gateway endpoint. And the way it works is like the name says gateway, like your internet gateway. You have a VPC gateway to connect to your VPN connections, right? So it create a gateway for your VPC and for by using that gateway, you can route your traffic to these services. And like for any other gateway, internet gateway or VPC gateway, what you do when you create, you will update your route table saying that, hey, any traffic going to particular site or range, send it to either internet gateway or send it to either virtual private gateway, right? So similarly, for the gateway endpoint as well, you will get a gateway endpoint and you will say any traffic going to the side or range which belongs to S3 or DynamoDB, send it to the gateway endpoint. So you will use a route table or route table will be updated with this gateway endpoint. And now the question comes that, uh, hey, what side or range I need to use for S3 and DynamoDB? I don't know because for internet gateway, you put that 0 .0 0.0.0.0 should go to the internet gateway or for VPN connection, you might use whatever the CIDR of your on-prem, but here we don't, know, uh, we don't know what is the CIDR for S3 or DynamoDB. So you don't need to worry about that because what Amazon has done that, they have created a prefix list for S3 and DynamoDB where they've already put the CIDR range of these services and in your route table, you will use the prefix list ID. And whenever you create an endpoint, it's already updated, even you don't need to do it. But for understanding that, that instead of putting the CIDR of, like if you have three CIDR range for S3, you don't need to put it, you will use the prefix list. And if you don't know what prefix list is, I already covered that topic in my earlier video. I'll provide you the link in the description and you will see on the right hand side corner of the screen as well. So please go ahead and watch. It's very uh, informative video where I talk in detail what is prefix list, what challenges it solves and how you can use it in your environment. So hope I, you understood what the gateway endpoint is. Next, let's go to the console and we'll do a demo where I'll show you how you can create an endpoint and uh, how you will use it. So for that, what I will be doing that I'll create a EC2 instance in a private subnet which won't have any connectivity to the internet and it won't be accessed my S3 so bucket list. Then we'll create a gateway endpoint. I'll show you that our table is updated. And once it's updated, then if you try to access my S3 bucket, you will be able to access those S3. So I'll see you in the console and we'll show you in the demo that how it works. So before starting the demo, I just want to show you on the pricing side. This is the Amazon VPC pricing uh, for NAT gateway. And you can see for NAT, you will pay hourly charge and the data processing charges. And it's clearly mentioned here that to avoid NAT gateway data processing charge, in this example, you could set up gateway VPC endpoint and route the traffic to and from S3 through the VPC endpoint instead of using NAT gateway. So uh, because gateway endpoints does not use, uh, does not charge you anything. So you can straight away save some money by using the endpoints instead of using the NAT gateways. So next I'll just walk you through what environment I have already set it up for you to show this demo. Uh, I have only one VPC in my North Virginia region and uh, 
I created one private route table and this route table uh, has a only one route, the local route. It does not have any internet or NAT gateway route. And one subnet I have associated ending with 6C8. So what I will do, I will uh, launch a EC2 instance, which I actually have already launched. So we'll have a EC2 instance running in this subnet, which won't have any public IP which cannot connect to the internet because the route table which is associated with the subnet does not have any internet gateway uh, route and when that uh, ec2 instance will try to list uh, buckets from s3 bucket basically the list of buckets will just try one command and it won't work but after that what we will do we'll create an endpoint we'll associate that endpoint with this route table and after that that instance will be able to um, list all the buckets from my S3. So I've already uh, created one EC2 instance and what I will do, I will connect to that EC2 instance so that let's copy this. And I have <clears throat> started a Cloud9 environment <clears throat> in my same VPC in my public subnet and let's connect. So I'm connected to my uh, EC2 instance. And if you see, if I do ping google.com, <clears throat> I won't get any response back. Similarly, if I do AWS voice S3 space LS, you won't get any response back because it's not connected to the internet. Next, let's go to VPC and we'll create the endpoint. So to do that, you have to go to the endpoints and click on create endpoints. First, we have to select a service because we are doing for S3. So we'll select S3. And for S3, you can create two different kinds of endpoints. One is gateway, one is interface. Interface we'll talk in our next video. But in today's, we are talking about gateway. So we'll select gateway. And like I mentioned, for the gateway, you need to select a route table because it will be associated with the route table because a route will be added in the particular route table. So we will use our private route table. Uh, where only one subnet is associated with it. In addition to that, you can uh, specify policy as well. And the policy will help you to restrict that who all can access the S3 buckets or your S3 UK points from your VPC or from that particular subnet. So you can have policy at uh, your VPC level or from at your endpoint level. And another policy, you can have your bucket policy or AC or from whatever the S3 side you you want to do it, you can put it there as well. So there are different ways to secure those S3 buckets as well from your VPC. Then we'll create on, click on create endpoints. So my endpoint is created. Now, if I go back to my route table, you can see, uh, let me refresh it on my private route table, go to the route and you will see a new route is added. And what that route is saying that if my destination is this, and what this is, this is the prefix list. So let me open it in a new window. And you can see it's managed prefix lists. And this is S3. So by default, it, Amazon will create two default uh, uh, prefix lists for you. One for S3 and one for DynamoDB. And the one with the S3 have all the entries or endpoints for your S3 in that particular region. And this is referenced here in the route table. So any... Uh, query going to these IP address will go to your endpoint, which is ending with 7cc. And if you merge it here, my endpoint is 7cc. So now, because see, I just need to create an endpoint. I don't need to do anything, but you should understand that how in the background it works. So it updated the route table. Now, in your EC2, in your subnet, if EC2 instance try to connect to the S3, it will try to resolve one of the IP address in that prefix list. It will go to your route table and it will find a route. Okay, I need to go through this endpoint. And this endpoint is behind the scenes connected through Amazon network to those S3 buckets. So now if you do the same AWS space S3 space LS, you will be able to display all the uh, bucket names. So that's how endpoint uh, VP gateway endpoint work, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any question and please uh, subscribe and like this video and share with your friends. Uh, I will be coming with the next video on the interface endpoint uh, uh, after this and we'll 
uh, provide you the link and will share with you guys. So please uh, subscribe, hit on the bell icon so that you get update whenever I launch that video as well. Thank you. Bye.